I was born in Newport Beach, California, and I learned to surf at Blackie's down by 22nd Street, which was a lot of fun. When I was ready to go to high school, I moved up to Mammoth and had the opportunity to get really into ski racing, but I started too late. And I guess I'm lucky that I failed at ski racing because it led me to Maui and that's worked out okay. And I remember my parents called from Kauai and they said, you wanna come over, we'll buy you a ticket. Obviously the next day I was headed to Hawaii and the plane had to land on Maui before it carried on over to Kauai where I was going. As we approached Maui, I'm looking out the window and I recognized Hokipa because I was just getting into windsurfing at the time. And there was a flagpole right next to the baggage area and the flag was just pinned. And it came over me, this is where I belong. Went back home, finished school in about a month, sold everything I had. And July 2nd, 1985, that was the day I landed on Maui and headed down a new path. Got sponsors, made a name for myself, and, and was able to make my living windsurfing. And I've managed to avoid a real job ever since. <laughs> Through the friendships that I made in windsurfing, we formed a bond of people that love to be in the ocean, love to experiment, love to get away from the crowds. And that's what ultimately led us to toe surfing. Toe surfing was a strike of lightning that hit us all, that I think nobody anticipated how much fun we would have with it and the opportunities it would create for us. Toe surfing started so innocently, but it became very serious as time went on. And that was more dictated by the surf and the realization that we weren't just playing anymore. We were pioneering a new form of big wave riding. And everything we learned was the hard way. We didn't have anyone in front of us saying do this or, or being able to watch somebody. We had to create it all as we went. And just having an open mind and being willing to experiment, willing to discover, willing to fail, it's that mentality that led to be open to even trying foil boarding. And that's what allowed us to refine stand-up paddling. We kind of stumbled upon it in approximately 95. And at that time, Laird and myself were riding 12-foot longboards. And one day, we were on our 12-footers. The waves were about knee-high. And so I just came from canoe practice. I got a couple canoe paddles. So I go run to the truck. I grab the canoe paddles. I throw him one. And voila, you know, the peanut butter met the jelly, and we were off and running stand-up paddling. Now, we had heard of guys doing it in Waikiki from way back, all the way back to the Duke. So neither of us have ever claimed to invent stand-up. It was just another way to enjoy the ocean. When we started to develop the downwind boards was when I went all in. I remember when we made our first 16-foot prototypes, and they were quite expensive at the time. So I made these little one-foot models to try and figure out, okay, is concave it, is V-bottom, round, flat? And I, I probably looked like the oldest, you know, eight-year-old on the beach but it illustrated 
what designs were fastest, and then we could go into our first set of prototypes that we made, and they were much faster than anything we had ridden at that point. That was not only the start of downwind stand-up, that was the start of stand-up being a legitimate sport within itself. Even though there's competition, there is such a sense of inclusion and mutual stoke with all the competitors, with all the participants. It doesn't matter. So I think to some degree, Laird and I did have a part to play in establishing what the mentality of stand-up would be because we wanted to share it with our friends. But as time has gone by, I feel obliged to share everything I know. And that's where all the Kalama camps come from. That's where all the tips come from. And so I really get a lot of enjoyment out of coaching people, out of seeing them find that passion that I have for it too. Like in the early days of stand-up, one of the most enjoyable parts was the creative process of coming up with equipment that makes a sport better. That's where my partnering with companies that have that same passion and desire to develop equipment, share technique, share the scope.